Okay, so if you have been self-publishing books or are considering in self-publishing books, you may have heard of an option called ghostwriting. And you're probably kind of wondering, just as I did a number of years ago when I first came into this business, what exactly is ghostwriting? Is ghostwriting for me or not? We're going to be talking a little bit more about the pros and cons of ghostwriting in today's episode, so make sure you stay tuned. This is episode 47. It's crazy for me to say that, that we've been doing this particular type of podcast format for the past 47 weeks. So I took two weeks off somewhere in that 47 weeks, so it's technically 49. But nonetheless, we are still on track. We just moved over to a new podcasting platform called Blueberry. Uh, it's spelled without the E, so it's B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. If you are normally used to listening to me over on SoundCloud, sorry, those days have come to an end. Uh, best of luck to SoundCloud and their future endeavors, but for right now, I'm really, really happy about what's going to happen on Blueberry. Now, if you're listening to any of the other aggregate um, sites, such as iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, so on and so forth, the, it, the services should be going on as per usual because I will just be redirecting the RSS feed. All right, so I got all the nerd stuff out the way. I do want to say that today's podcast is exclusively sponsored by Fiverr. The Fiverr book and ebook store is the ultimate home for developing, perfecting, and publishing book length content. Many people th- feel they have the next big book inside of them or want to attract new leads and engage their audience with an ebook that educates and converts. But Many have trouble turning their vision into reality or simply just don't have the bandwidth to write a full-length book. That's where Fiverr comes in. Fiverr is an all-in-one platform, provides everything you need to go from concept to finished and packaged book. The services in the store follow the logical order of a book's life cycle. That's the part I really like. So for instance, if you already wrote your book, you could probably skip forward to editors. If you already had your book edited, you can go over into marketing and promotion or packaging. So it's really kind of a cool thing. So to browse their services and see why I'm so excited about this new layout, visit dalelinks.com slash Fiverr. Again, that's F-I-V-E-R-R. There's two R's. DaleLinks.com slash Fiverr. Let's jump right into things because we're going to talk about what is ghost writing. All right, so some of you out there probably are already pretty familiar with it, but I'm going to break it down for those that don't understand or may not quite know what it is. Essentially, a ghost writer is a freelance author who writes on the behalf of somebody else. So who does ghost writing? The easiest way for me to describe this to you is athletes. Athletes and maybe even some more famous people will typically get their books ghostwritten. So, for instance, you know, I'm a big fan of Stone Cold Steve Austin, wrestler, and he actually had a biography, autobiography put out. And you'll notice on the actual cover, it'll say his name with so and so. And I don't remember who his ghostwriter was, but either way, that so-and-so was the person who ghost wrote the book for him. Now, most likely, uh, Steve Austin probably sat down, did a full in-depth interview, and then that specific freelance writer sat down and wrote everything out painstakingly and just tried to etch out everything he did from an interview or maybe a questionnaire that Steve Austin filled out. Now, that's just one example of ghostwriting. Uh, there are so many other ghostwritten books out there on the market. And I, I often hear some authors out there that just really balk at ghostwriting. They say, oh, it's, it's not ethical. To me, I think that it's completely ethical. It just depends on how you leverage this particular model. So if you're going in trying to misrepresent yourself as saying, well, I wrote 100% of this book, this is all mine, then yeah, of course that's unethical. But to me, I think of ghostwriting like this. When I go to the movies, I go to watch the movie. I don't care who produced it, with the exceptions, you know, maybe Martin Scorsese um, or any number of other ones. But I always go to movies just to be entertained. I don't care who put it together. I don't care who directed it. I don't care who produced it. Heck, I jump, I skip out when the, the credits start rolling. So the same thing kind of works when it comes to ghostwriting in that readers are looking to be entertained, whether it's through fiction work and they're getting their suspension of disbelief or it's nonfiction and somebody has a problem and you're providing them a solution. That's where ghostwriting comes in. To me, if I've got a problem, I'm going to search it up. I don't care about the author. I just want to know that they're giving me some good information. I'll buy it. I'll read it. 
That's important to me. So why do people hire ghostwriters? It's quite simple sometimes. It comes down to, first of all, thinking about skill set. Some people just can't write to save their lives. Just let's be honest. In fact, there are even some people out there that English is their second language. They still want to write a book, but they just don't have the skills to do it. So that's why they would hire ghostwriter. Or on the opposite end of the spectrum, I had a conversation with my, a friend of mine, Nick Nemen, over at Vid Summit this past year. And uh, we were uh, with around, around with some people at this round table and just kind of discussing, talking shop. And I just looked at him and I said, hey, man, when are you going to put out this book, man? And he looked at me and he goes, as soon as you write it. And we all started cracking up laughing. And he's like, no, seriously. He's like, I just don't have the mental bandwidth to sit down and devote the time to even do this. So sometimes... It just depends on how busy someone is. Are they going to be able to have the time or the mental bandwidth to do that or the skills to do it? So that's why ghostwriting comes in. By the way, spoiler alert, I'm not writing Nick Nemen's book. Uh, that, that was something I politely declined. I'm already busy with my own content. So where can you find the best ghostwriters? Now, I'm going to say the number one way and the very first way you should always look into is through referrals. There's going to be other self-publishers out there in author communities that you can be able to kind of network with other people and get a recommendation from them and figure out, okay, is so-and-so worthwhile? Because if someone's worked with a freelancer or a ghostwriter of some sort for a certain period of time, then chances are pretty likely they may end up wanting to work with you. You might find from time to time those that outsource this portion of their business as self-publishers may not want to share that information with you. That's okay. Don't take offense to it. They probably just want to have that freelancer to themselves and they want to have all the ghost writing, the writing done for them and nobody else. Um, but I find that for a vast majority of the self-publishing audience out there, they typically want to help out. So just reach out within your community and see if you can get some good referrals. There are a number of freelancing websites. Of course, I've already mentioned one today in the exclusive sponsors of Fiverr. Um, and I'll, I'll discuss them in just a second here. And there's also Upwork. There's so many other platforms. Heck, I think I even heard of, like it might have been like uh, Hot Ghost Writers might be one. And uh, this is not my endorsement of these particular avenues, folks. Um, I do want to say, though, just doubling back around, I originally used to just poo-poo when it came to Fiverr and getting ghostwriters because quite a bit of it, you know, you think about Fiverr and it's $5 for a service and you're like, well, what kind of good, actual good ghostwriting am I going to get at $5? And that was my apprehension, but I actually got to talk to the team over at the Fiverr headquarters and they actually quelled some of my concerns and some of my apprehensions. I've heard horror stories of people getting some of the services through there and getting either plagiarized content or just less than passable content. And Fiverr said they're doing their best, of course, snuff out those type of things. But they say for good ghostwriters, you're typically paying more of a premium. So they actually have some of those. And if you stay tuned to my YouTube channel, I actually will be hiring out a ghostwriter on their platform and trying them out and taking them for a run. And I'm going to tell you what I'll be doing here in just a minute when it comes to using a ghostwriter because um, I will tell you the processes that I will be using during this whole process. So how do you know your ghostwriter is providing fresh content? That's the biggest concern because anybody can read some content and go, okay, that's good or bad. And of course, it is subjective. From time to time, though, you can always tell if someone's just complete, you know, hammered garbage. So in those particular instances, you can just vet that out. I always recommend if you're going to work with a ghostwriter, take them for a test drive. Never plunk down thousands upon thousands of dollars into a ghostwriter until you've at least seen a page or two of work. And I would recommend starting off a project where they just take things off in bite-sized chunks. That way you know this person is who they say they are. So in any event, um, so when it comes to providing fresh content, uh, again, we're going to kind of go back to reputation. Referrals are a huge and very valuable resource. So if for some reason I want to find out some good ghost writers for children's books, I might reach out to my buddy Keith Wheeler and say, hey, Keith, you probably know of some good ghost writers. 
Now, Keith knows that I trust and really respect him enough to know that he's going to give me somebody who actually is going to work with me very well. So there is reputation on his part, and he probably is going to refer someone to me that he's actively worked with and can trust and has a reputation. Reputation's huge, especially when it comes to the business world. And for those freelancers out there and the ghostwriters, they, you know, they have to pay their bills too. So those that are actually doing it on the up and up aren't going to screw you over. They know they've got a reputation, they got to pay the bills, and they're going to give you the best content time and again. The next item is plagiarism detection. You need to, to get into the habit. If you're going to use ghostwriters, always, 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 always check for plagiarism. Now, there's a number of free plagiarism detectors online. My pref preferred one is actually called Grammarly, and I will just plug it on into there. The biggest issue when it comes to plagiarism detectors like Grammarly or the online ones is it will go and it'll scan all of the publications that are online but it doesn't get publications that aren't necessarily like say for instance freely available on a website so let's just say for instance my brother's book live streaming kit he has that available on amazon and the four alternatives it's not freely available for people so it's not going to go into the plagiarism detection because these plagiarism detectors don't know it's there okay it's behind a paywall so it's going through and figuring out what is freely available online. So that's how those plagiarism detectors work. I still recommend you do it. And I'm actually gonna share a story here in just a second here when it comes to how that plagiarism detector really saved my rear end. Um, the next thing is be wary of new systems. The, the, there are gonna be some scammers out there in every walk of business. And when it comes to ghostwriting, there's definitely plenty of them out there, but there are far more good people out there than there are bad you got to be aware of the fact that these bad actors out there they figure out ways to work around the system and one of them actually a good friend of mine and former coaching student reached out to me and shared with me something just super scary this past year in that he'd hired a ghostwriter and outwardly it didn't look like anything was wrong okay he, he was like oh, okay great through through a plagiarism detector but for some reason he was looking at Microsoft Word and it was showing like different red lines on there. It was, it was detecting errors, but he didn't see anything. Well, then he goes and he copies and pastes this over to like a notepad and was horrified to find out that it was plagiarized content. What they did was they would switch out random letters throughout. They would take them and turn them into symbols. So... To the naked eye, it looked like it was 100% clear and you know it, it passed the plagiarism detector. But in reality, what happened is this bad actor went, grabbed an online article, completely took it and they spun it in a way that they changed out the letters for symbols. Scary, right? So um, there is also a few other the bad actors out there. They will take some some portion of content and they'll do what I just said called spinning and spinners are essentially uh, it's software that you can just drop your content into it and it will change out different words it'll make the wording just a little bit different so it's kind of like a thesaurus and it'll do it automatically for you sometimes the work comes back a bit disjointed so if you're ever reading something it seems a bit disjointed you should probably scratch your head and kind of go I don't know about this because spinners aren't perfect by any stretch so it typically shows up in disjointed writing where you're like, nobody says that in real life. Why would they even write that? All right, and uh, last but not least, I wanted to make sure to uh, give you one really good tip and a big bonus tip at the very end here. I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. Always check your ghost writer's work, all right? I just honestly, I'm going to tell you, I dodged a bullet a number of years ago when I first got into this business about, oh, 2014-ish. I learned uh, from a few people that were really big during this whole Kindle publishing gold rush that, you know, hey, you know, you can write your own content. That's great. But you can really start to maximize the most out of your time by hiring ghostwriters. 
Um, and I'm like, okay, well, everybody else is doing it. I might as well go ahead and do it myself. So I went ahead and I started hiring ghostwriters. Well, one of them I'd hired on Upwork, and it might have been like Elance or Odesk at the time. One of them I'd worked with her on a five-part project, and it was a fiction series, and um, she did great work. I honestly, every I, the first few books, put it through plagiarism detector, nothing. Came back clean every single time. I really liked the work. I could get behind it. I enjoyed reading the fiction books. I was excited every single time her her works her work would come in. It got about oh at the end of the uh, project, I got lazy. I stopped checking the work. So I said, hey, you know, ready to start a new project? Let's do another series. And she's like, yeah, let's do that. And she asked for a little bit more money. I was okay. I was like, yeah, you know what? You're you're doing great here with me. So project. And this was uh, book number six ends up rolling out. And I was just like, you know what? Maybe I should just go ahead and check this just, just for the heck of it. And I was horrified to find that there was another story that was exactly the same. Now, it wasn't the same words. What she ended up doing was she found some fan fiction style site and she just changed out the character names. And it was just the same plot. It was the same everything. And I, I, my stomach sank. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I could have published this. I'd already paid her at the time because I was like, well, I trust her. And I'm like, ah. I came back and I'm like, please tell me, like, I, I'm seeing something wrong. Did you write this piece? Like, and come to find out that, yeah, she was writing some stuff online. So what she'd done was she'd taken a specific um, series that she was already working on on her blog site. And that's how she produced my first five books inside the series. And uh, I'm like, well, first of all, A, take down those things because I own the rights to it now. Um, if you don't take this down, we're going to be run into some serious issues. So there was no issue on that. Took them down. But then there came the issue of book number six. I'm like, okay, can you explain this? And she couldn't. She literally had gone in and plagiarized the content. And I was so sad. And I'm like, look... If there's any ounce of integrity in your bones, you will go ahead and refund me the money and we're going to part ways and call it, you know, even. And so, yeah, that's what ended up happening. I don't think she did any more freelancing on that website, but nonetheless, you can see, never let your guard down. If somebody's writing books on your behalf and part of your business, it is your responsibility to make sure they're doing it on the up and up. Uh, to kind of share just another story, this past year, there was a big old dumpster fire when it came to Amazon. Nora Roberts became involved in it. There was a romance author that was doing what's called mosaic plagiarism. And she was claiming to have got her work ghostwritten on Fiverr. And she tried to throw these freelancers under the bus. And then these freelancers came out and said, no, 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 no. Um, this is exactly what she told us in the communication. They shared some of the screenshots and... So yeah, Nora Roberts ended up going and pretty much um, taking this woman to court and uh, down in Brazil of all places. Yeah, Nora's got some discretionary expense. She can do that. So this kind of just goes to show that you never let your guard down. Uh, ghostwriters are great. They're awesome. Always go for referrals and reputation. Someone has a reputation. They're not going to be ruining that by giving you some plagiarized or half-assed work. Hey, I want to do a really quick plug here and let you know that every Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime, that's Universal Time Coordinated, minus four, I actually go live on YouTube. That's at dalelinks.com slash live. And of course, as you're listening to this over through your pod, favorite podcasting platform, um, you probably aren't aware that I'm actually recording the very next week's content over at twitch.tv slash self-publish. Do that every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime, Universal Time, Coordinated minus four. I'm actually able to chat to some people. You get behind the scenes look on how I produce this. You can actually see me gesticulating wildly to the audience. So um, in any event, uh, that is every Monday, though. You can join me at twitch.tv slash self-publish. And if you missed the broadcast, you can always just click the videos tab and catch the replay for at least two weeks after the broadcast. My final tip when it comes to ghostwriting. So it comes down to time versus money. All right. I want you to think about this. Do you have more time than you have money? Because if you have more time than you have money, then you may have to consider doing it yourself or learning how to do it. Meaning, you're gonna to need to write your own content for right now and do it yourself. 
Um, if you're not skilled at it, I would recommend learning it. It all comes down to sweat equity because if you've got the time and you're willing to put in the work, then you'll be able to write your own content. Now, let's just say, for instance, you're like my good friend Nick Nemen or my buddy Dan Courier. You're kind of strapped for time and you may want to kind of look into another avenue if you've got the discretionary expense to hire somebody out to do the ghostwriting and follow some of these tips. So I said I was going to talk about the pros and cons when it comes to ghostwriting. The pros are, helps out those that need the help. So that way you can be able to get your message out into the world without having to shackle yourself down to writing a book. The cons are, well, there's some bad actors out there and they can really try to screw you over, take your money and leave you with just nothing but a bunch of garbage. Um, don't be like that. I think I've given you enough tips in today's podcast recording and hopefully you enjoyed it. And hey, if you could just do me a huge favor, I need you to subscribe or follow me on your preferred podcasting platform and leave me a review. That'd be fantastic. Uh, next week, I'll share you one of the nice reviews I got from somebody over on the iTunes platform. In the meantime, and in between time, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale Podcast, and I will talk to you next week.